Hi everyone, this is Sadiq Iqbal, and uh, today uh, I'm going to present the uh, project related to advanced 5G and ground technology, which is titled "A New Dual Transmission Technique <clears throat> Employing Auxiliary Signals Auxiliary Signal Superposition for Improving Throughput Efficiency and Reliability <clears throat> of Future Generation ISO Added Communication Systems." <clears throat> this technique is uh, employing uh, physical layer uh, technology in order to uh, remove the interference, improve the throughput efficiency and reliability for future generation siso edited communication systems. So the uh, presentation includes five, six parts. First is introduction. Um, in this, uh, I'm gonna talk about the, uh, what is 5G and uh, why the, uh, what is, is, are the requirements related to uh, new 5G and 6G communication systems, the devices applications, <clears throat> why is there a need for uh, higher data rates, reliability, interference-free communication. And uh, in the next part, I'm gonna talk about the problems that are currently existing and <clears throat> what to, uh, what uh, problems are there. And uh, in the proposed method, uh, in uh, the proposed method uh, model, I'm gonna talk about uh, uh, how to solve, uh, what are the <coughs> ways in which the existing problems are uh, tackled and how they are mitigated and uh, how they are improved. And uh, 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 and uh, I'm gonna talk about the uh, system model of the proposed method, whatever this includes. And in the algorithm section, I'm gonna talk about, about the mathematical uh, uh, algorithms, equations, and uh, how are they, they drive what they include and the auxiliary signals and how the physical layer is used in order to drive the auxiliary signals in the, in the solar algorithm section. And the simulation results, I'm gonna uh, talk about the results obtained uh, by uh, in applying the proposed method and uh, simulating uh, the algorithm. And uh, in the conclusions, I'm finally gonna include uh, the uh, what we achieved and uh, what are the future directions for the uh, this particular research work. Okay, so introduction. Why improving the data, right? And uh, for services and application like uh, you, uh, if I'm gonna, if I'm, if I talk about the data rate, some of you may ask, uh, for what, for uh, which services and applications uh, uh, the that require the immense data rate uh, and uh, how uh, the data rate is being uh, will Im improve and for what applications the data, uh, higher data requirements are uh, is essential. So uh, for example, we have, uh, if I talk about the services and devices, we have starting from, we have the uh, smart uh, home. And in the smart home, we they uh, uh, for example, they have smart refrigerator. We, we have the assistant speaker right now. For example, Google, Alexa, Siri. We have uh, cleaners. We have a smart kettle. We have smart sensors and uh, coffee machine, CCTV and IP cameras. We have the dustbin, smart. We have the electro uh, microwaves. We have the smart washer, smart scale, smart trackers, and uh, the most of the uh, essential parts that we. Uh, use from basis normal basis are uh, is the smartwatch the uh, app phone uh, sorry the android the smartphone the tablet and our pcs <clears throat> these are uh, related to internet of things and uh, smart devices and if we uh, go outside of the uh, uh, our smart homes we have the uh, uh, automation uh, we have the autonomous uh, driving we have the traffic we have the uh, industrial we have generation, we have uh, real estate, and uh, we have the agriculture, and we have the aviation. All of these things are uh, uh, are services and, and applications that right now require immense uh, data rate. Why? Because uh, in, uh, for example, in Internet of Thing devices, the number of uh, devices that have increased is exponential from millions to billions in, a, in right now and uh, it will uh, continue to increase uh, in the, uh, and the data requirement uh, requirements will also rise up to uh, the next coming decade uh, which is related to 6G and beyond so uh, introduction why improving data and reliability 
Okay, so in this uh, in this scenario, uh, if you look into the, into the picture, we have E uh, uh, E M B B. We have ultra lab low latency communication. We have machine machine type communication. In uh, in the ultra uh, enhanced mobile broadband communication, we have smart homes. We have virtual reality. We have video calling. We have online gaming and uh, 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 video streaming. These are these applications and services require uh, high data rates and uh, a high speed. And uh, ultra reliable low latency communication. From the name, we can see that ultra reliable. And that means there is no chance of error even in uh, uh, small, even in uh, uh, thousands. Uh, or in millions of uh, packets that are sent. And uh, low latency, for example, let's say if, uh, if we talk about uh, remote surgery, remote surgery in, uh, is uh, uh, is like the uh, a person, a patient is in an, another uh, city or it can be another country and the doctor is uh, uh, in, in another place, is a remote place. So the doctor is uh, doing is a surgery, uh, is applying surgery uh, to the patient by uh, remotely. So in this particular scenario, uh, the reliability and the latency has to be ex uh, the reliability has to be extremely high, and the low uh, and the latency has to be extremely low. And in a uh, machine massive machine type communication, this is related to Internet of Thing devices. The population, the number of Internet of Thing IoT devices have ex uh, increased in. Uh, uh, exponentially in millions. So this uh, also increases the demand that is uh, uh, and the utilization of a data rate immensely. So these are the requirements that are essential. And right now the uh, these requirements are also uh, in, in terms uh, we can uh, in, uh, interpret them as shortcomings. They have the advantages and the disadvantages. The advantages uh, we already uh, discussed, and the disadvantages is that they require uh, extremely higher data rates, uh, efficient uh, rel and reliable communication and uh, services. And the quality of uh, communication is ha also has to be extremely high. Okay, so in addition, so these advanced technologies and applications require communication system that provides high data rates, reliable interference, interference free, and power efficient communication. So uh, from this uh, particular figure, we can also see that uh, we have a dense urban information society that means virtual reality uh, office. And uh, right now, currently due to the pandemic, the virtual reality system, uh, the uh, remote working uh, job uh, from home is uh, uh, the concept has uh, broadened uh, immensely. and. Uh, and due to this, the, uh, the data consumption has also increased. We have the shopping mall, we have a stadium with traffic jam, mobile and cloud processing, emergency communication, traffic efficiency, tele protection in smart grid and network, massive development sensor and actually these, these application services are, are, are an actuality and are a reality right now, they're happening. And, uh, and all these uh, application services, they require Amazingly fast, great service in a crowd-based experience and a super real-time and reliable communication. So uh, we talked about uh, why and what devices uh, and why these devices require high data rate and reliability and interface, interference free communication, and which devices are uh, included in, in this criteria. Okay, so uh, what are the existing problems? What are the limiting factors that are uh, these devices experiencing right now? From the first generation to fourth generation, uh, the communication was related to people to people. But uh, as the 5G came along from uh, 2016 to uh, 2020, people, this, uh, uh, paradigm shifted to people to think communication. That means we have this uh, laptop, mobile, smartphone, we have a uh, smart home, we have uh, smart watches, we have camera, we have uh, mic, we have uh, headphones. And uh, you can relate to uh, these uh, because we use these uh, devices 
uh, frequently on a daily basis and uh, in time turn in uh, uh, 20 to 30 and onwards the the whole scenario is not just uh, uh, surrounded uh, 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 is doesn't revolve will not revolve around human beings it will involve everything around us uh, the thing to thing communication so everything uh, living or non living and uh, objects and non organic objects will be included in the uh, thing to thing communication so uh, immense data requirement due to uh, the massive increase in uh, uh, in applications in uh, uh, number of uh, devices will uh, uh, will also increase the data rate requirement for example if <coughs> in uh, from uh, people from people to people communication the data requirement was uh, for example was in uh, billion uh, uh, in billion uh, in gigabytes and from people to thing it should reach from thousand of gigabytes but in, in from thing to thing it will uh, increase uh, it will uh, scale up to uh, terabyte and uh, and uh, exabyte and because of immensely uh, increasing number of uh, devices and applications and due to the increase in the this population of devices the demand is also uh, the demand of low br that is bit error rate uh, if we have for example bit error rate is if we send uh, uh, thousands of uh, data packets the number the uh, number of error in those packets has to be extremely low uh, if one in a thousand or one in a million so this is uh, uh, the demand of low ber and this is related to uh, communication for example uh, uh, voice communication, uh, messaging, and uh, uh, browsing, and uh, complexity issue. When number of devices increase, there are some factors that are related to hardware and uh, uh, that are device uh, limited. Uh, also, uh, increase, for example, in, in Internet of Things devices. The complexity issue is a huge factor and it is also a limiting factor in terms of designing the architecture, network architecture related to uh, the Internet of Things uh, devices because uh, these devices are very uh, power uh, limited and uh, in hardware limited as well and, and they're very battery limited as, as well. So they can, uh, in, in order to save the power in order to save the uh, battery life of the battery, the uh, of the internet of thing device, the in the services, the, uh, the communication, the wireless communication services and networks have to be designed up according to this uh, for the internet of thing devices. Uh, uh, the, the design has to be uh, carried out a uh, while considering this complexity issue as well and a lot of processing done at the receiver side <clears throat> for internet of thing devices the processing has to be extremely low which is done at the receiver side but right now the uh, if we include the internet of thing devices that is also a major factor which uh, these devices and the networks are uh, and the big companies uh, and the manufacturers are uh, uh, experiencing not efficiently utilizing power resources from the transmitter to to the receiver uh, due to the uh, massive increase in uh, uh, utilization of uh, devices in uh, employing the devices and utilization of the of the wireless communication network and the services the power utilization uh, and the power resources are not efficiently uh, being used so this is also a, a very critical expect a uh, very critical uh, problem that is existing and not limiting the interference without extra processing this is uh, uh, i think uh, this is uh, a little common sense because uh, in to thing to thing communication there are millions of uh, millions of, of millions of users in in uh, in billions if we include the all the uh, devices as well so the interference uh, will also uh, increase and this will pose uh, and this right now is also uh, po uh, posing a very uh, severe 
uh, defect and having very severe effect on the uh, communication, on the quality of communication and uh, data write and reliability and uh, many other things as well. So uh, these uh, six are the existing factors. There are, there are a lot of other factors that are not included, uh, but uh, uh, these are the main factors that are uh, that uh, we focus on in this uh, particular research work. And uh, and we talk about we talked about the existing uh, existing problems uh, before we talked about the introduction then uh, existing problems and now uh, in order to tackle in order to deal with these uh, existing problems to provide solution we uh, in uh, we propose the this method this scheme <clears throat> now our proposed method tackles all the existing problems and for some simplicity. At the receiver side, we employ SISO system. SISO system is single input, single output. That means at the transmit uh, at the transmitter side, we have only one antenna, and at the receiver side, we have only one antenna. <clears throat> and from the system model diagram, first of all, let me explain what the, the system model diagram uh, is basically conveying. At the transmitter side, we have the base station that has two transmitter antennas and a single RF chain. Why single RF chain? Because we have only single user at the receiver side. And, uh, but uh, uh, some of you may ask, you talk about SISO, that means that the receivers at the transmitter side, we have a single input. But uh, right uh, here, you have two antennas. But, uh, so this is not a SISO system. But uh, uh, in order to, create a SISO system environment, we are not uh, employing the two, uh, we are not utilizing the two antennas at the same time. Only one antenna is active at the uh, at a single time and uh, the other antenna is deactive. So the transmission, that the transmission is carried in two rounds. And the data, the for the use, for a single user, we are sending two uh, data, that means X1 and X2. So the data rate is uh, inherently doubled for a single user. The one of the requirements is, uh, uh, is completed, is fulfilled, that is the increasing the data rate. And we are using auxiliary signal super positioning, that is the A1 and A2 in two rounds. In first round, we are sending the uh, A1 auxiliary and the second, in, we are sending the uh, signal A2 with the user data. So in two rounds, the communication, uh, the whole, Communication, uh, the whole communication process is uh, uh, is done in two rounds. In first round, we are sending the letter, uh, the user data with all the output signal. And in the second round, we are sending the uh, data with the user data with the second auxiliary signal. And keep in mind that the two transmitter uh, antennas are uh, in first round, only one single uh, antenna is active and the other is deactive. So we, uh, call this uh, process dual transmission. So this creates a SISO system, a system environment because in, in one round, we are only utilizing one single antenna and one, and at the receiver side, we have only one receiver. Okay, so the proposed method, this is the block diagram of the uh, of the of our proposed model. On the upper part of the diagram is the conventional system that is employing SISO, uh, SISO configuration, and uh, also utilizing ARQ automatic repeat request conventional ARQ. And uh, in our proposed system, we are utilizing dual transmission, and uh, we have uh, two transmitters, uh, tra transmit antennas, TA1 and TA2, which are uh, utilized in uh, two rounds. In one round, only one DNA is active. And in the conventional system, the only, a single data is sent, that means X1 is sent to the transmitter, uh, from the transmitter to the receiver. So the, sing, uh, the single receiver only receives a uh, single data. The data rate is not increased, but in our uh, proposed system, we are sending uh, the double the data rate, that means X1 and X2 for a single user, so the uh, data rate is increased. And uh, keep in mind that uh, in the conventional uh, system, ARQ is utilized. Uh, ARQ uh, uh, is automatic repeat request, and uh, it is carried in uh, 
in uh, in a different uh, steps in uh, that means uh, the first the uh, uh, the transmitter and the receiver uh, say uh, they, they send requests and after the uh, acknowledgement and not acknowledgement are uh, after that <clears throat> the data is uh, the communication is carried out but in our proposed uh, system we do not wait for the receiver uh, response from the server we die uh, we directly transmit the data from the second antenna uh, uh, because uh, if we need to save time and uh, also uh, we need to utilize we need to uh, keep the latency as low as possible for uh, the communication to be much more effective in terms of uh, ultra low uh, ultra reliable low latency communication. In our proposed model, we in our proposed method, what we are, uh, what uh, is the the contribution and the novelty is that we uh, apply, <clears throat> we combine different methods in one single technique. The our proposed method is less complex, and uh, by using the auxiliary signal superpositioning. The we decrease the complexity at the receiver side, and uh, the due to this we are decreasing the processing at the receiver side, which all which in terms is uh, saves the power, and uh, therefore at the receiver side there is low power consumption, which is beneficial for Internet of Things devices. The proposed algorithm uses all specially designed auxiliary signals to automatically cancel the interference and simply find the transmission complexity. The auxiliary signals are designed in such a way that uh, when the signals receive uh, are received at the receiver side, the uh, auxiliary signals automatically cancel each other and the interference. So the uh, user just receives the uh, signal and decodes it. There is no extra computation. And uh, in our system, there are two rounds of the signal based dual transmission. As I explained earlier, in dual transmission, only one single actina is active in a single round. And uh, minimal co computation, the channel matrices are diagonal, uh, diagonal. Therefore, the inverse operation is simple. Constant the algorithm signal matrices can be designed by simple computation. This is also an advantage, and there is no extra uh, uh, processing done at the transmitter uh, side as well. So the algorithm includes uh, we we are sending two signals, one signal from one antenna in one round. So U1 and U2 are the two signals that are sent during a transmission round one and round two. And the both the signals can include user data and a single auxiliary signal, A1 and A2 for U1 and U2. These are the transmitted signals. And uh, after the transmission, the signals received at the receiver are Y1 and Y2. The Y1 and Y2, these signals, uh, after experiencing the channel, they uh, are uh, and uh, after adding the noise when they are received at the receiver, they the uh, signals can be represented as H1 multiplied by U1 and plus noise and H2 multiplied by U2 plus noise. And uh, in order to for uh, uh, because we are utilizing dual transmission and uh, we are not sending the sig signals at the same time we uh, for and this we use at the uh, maximum ratio of combining at the receiver side in order to combine the two signals and for this we are employing Hermitian transposition and which is the uh, from this from H uh, exponential H, H this is the Hermitian transposition and uh, we apply this to the both of the signals because we are uh, using MRC. At, uh, at the receiver side as well to combine the two signals and we get to this final equation after applying the uh, after uh, uh, substituting the values of y1 and y2 and uh, recombine and adjusting the values according to the uh, uh, data x1 x2 and after the all the pro, uh, all of the steps are done all the substitution is done is carried out the final and the combined received signal is the is that the h1 H1 and H2 XP are uh, X1 and X2 and uh, the channel uh, channel multiplied by A1 original and A2 original and the afterwards the noise. 
in order to so uh, this is the uh, signal received at the receiver side so in order to get the required data and uh, uh, in order to eliminate the interference at the receiver side we will uh, design the auxiliary signal in such a way that the interference that is h1 and h2 is uh, eliminated without any extra computation at the receiver side so designing all, all uh, the auxiliary signals and uh, are these auxiliary signals are designed to be a function of user's channel power uh, which is the h1 uh, modulus of h1 uh, square and uh, modulus of h2 square so the auxiliary signal a1 is equal to g divided by modulus h1 square and minus g divided by h2 square from the uh, uh, design of the auxiliary signals if we if we include the values uh, in this equation uh, we can actually see that uh, uh, after the uh, processing is done the H, uh, the a1 and, and a2 are actually automatically cancelled because the design or the unique design of the auxiliary signals a1 and a2 and g is the is the uniform distribution uh, distributed uh, uh, vector and uh, and the values of this uh, g can be found using the this uh, particular uh, expression which is the uniform distributed burden <coughs> uh, expression and uh, according and by using this uh, expression we can control the uh, power and we can actually limit the uh, power usage uh, up to a certain limit uh, that is very desirable and uh, by doing this we can we can uh, <coughs> save the uh, we can uh, uh, improve the peak to average power ratio performance of the <coughs> purpose model as well and we will see this in the coming slides <coughs> okay the, simu the simulation results in the simulation, uh, after implying, uh, after the applying and simulating the proposed method uh, in the in the MATLAB, we uh, in the simulation results we obtain the BR, PR, packet error rate, uh, TR, throughput error rate, and PAPR of the <coughs> size of model. Okay, so uh, in the bit error rate, bit error rate is uh, basically uh, the number of uh, bit errors. Uh, that are transmitted uh, and uh, divided by the total number of bits. So the purple uh, graph, uh, the purple line shows us the uh, user BR of the proposed model and the green line is a conventional size. So our proposed model has improved BR, uh, or BR graph than the conventional source model and this uh, this is uh, this actually shows that our proposed model is better than the conventional size. And the uh, red is is uh, the red graph. The red line is related to MISO, SIMO, and the blue line is related to MISO uh, because they have different characteristics. SIMO there is related to uh, single input, multiple output, and this is uh, in terms of receiver uh, diversity. And in MISO, uh, multiple input, single output. This is related to uh diversity and uh, reliability as well and uh, it this is a effective in terms of multipath okay so packet error rate packet error rate is uh, as the name implies uh packet uh error is rate of packets received divided uh, and this is also a computed error by using the bit error rate and uh, by the from this graph we can actually see that the uh, bit error rate uh, has by using the, propo uh, the proposed algorithm, the end auxiliary signals, the interference is uh, improved, uh, is canceled, and the communication quality of service and the quality of communication is improved as well. The TR uh, uh, throughput error rate, that means uh, the data rate is increased and the errors are, are, are less. And for the, the red uh, line shows the TR, the throughput error rate for uh, Conventional size so and the uh, blue line shows the throughput error rate for the user throughput that we utilizing the proposed algorithm which is doubled. Uh, if you remember from the proposed system that uh, the size system there is only single data sent for the user and uh, in our proposed model we are sending for double double data for the single user. And so the uh, peak to average power ratio. The 
purple and the green line is shown uh, it shows the proposed model of pt average power ratio which is uh, less than the conventional ofdm conventional size of conventional MIMO, miso system <clears throat> And this is related to uh, in uh, controlling the power uh, of the audio signals by using the expression I am, as I mentioned earlier. And this is uh, very, very beneficial for Internet of Things devices because they require peak, less peak to average power ratio uh, and uh, actually save power at the transfer and receiver. So in conclusion, by utilizing the proposed, the proposed method, we can achieve higher data rate, enhance reliability, less complexity, better peak to every power ratio, and eliminate interference at the receiver side. For future work, this method can be extended for more than one user. And uh, thank you. This is this was the presentation related to my course project of 5G and uh, advanced 5G and beyond technologies.